In this problem, we're asked to sketch the organic molecule 445-tribromo-3-ethylhexanoic acid. The first step here is obviously parsing the name of that very big and complicated molecule. Again, 445-tribromo-3-ethylhexanoic acid. So let's recognize some individual parts of this, such as 445-tribromo, we see an ethyl next to that, preceded by a 3, so we'll group those. Hexan looks kind of like hexane, so we'll put that aside as well. And finally, the suffix oic acid. Next up, let's determine what the backbone of this molecule is. We already identified the hexan as being important in there, so it looks like this organic molecule is going to have 6 carbons in its backbone. So we're going to go ahead and put those out and number them for clarity. And then, obviously, we're going to tie them all together with bonds. Okay, after that, we want to determine what the dominant functional group in this molecule is. As referenced in the text, we have this oic acid on the end, which is short for carboxylic acid, and that's going to be the dominant group here. Since it's the dominant group, we're going to put it on our C1 carbon, which, for the record, could be on either end, but we've already listed it as the one on the left, so we'll go ahead and pop it on there. And we can remember that a carboxylic acid group is carbon double bounded to an O and then single bonded to an OH group. After that, we need to distribute our other functional groups. So we'll begin with that tribromo. Bromo means bromine atoms and tri means that there are three of them. And as we can see, the name of the molecule indicates the positions of them. Two on the fourth carbon atom and one on the fifth carbon atom. So we'll go ahead and put those on there and then that one on there. After that, all we have left is that ethyl group, and that apparently belongs on carbon 3. Recall that ethyl is short for ethane, which is two carbons with their accompanying hydrogens, but we'll start with the carbons for now and put them on like that. And finally, we're going to take the numbers off of our carbon atoms, since we've already established which carbons are which in our molecule, and then we're going to add the hydrogen atoms that are left over. Recall that each carbon atom needs to be involved in four bonds, so any that are short of four bonds are going to make those up with hydrogens. The carbon in our carboxylic acid group is already set, but the one next to him only has two bonds, so we're going to put two hydrogens in on him. The next carbon in the line has three bonds, so he needs a hydrogen. The one in the ethyl group attached to him right above also needs two hydrogens. And the one on the end is only in one bond, so it needs three hydrogens which we'll abbreviate with that little H3. Following our hexane chain, the next carbon has four bonds, so it's good. The fifth carbon only has three bonds, so we'll put one hydrogen on there. And the one terminating our chain only has one bond, so that also needs three hydrogens. And here we are, our finished product of 445-tribromo-3-ethylhexanoic acid. Voila!